most important thing was being true to the animated series and making sure that when anyone was watching the show that they felt like that were in that world. Hi, I'm Jabbar Raisani. I'm an executive producer, director, and visual effects supervisor on Avatar The Last Airbender. Hi, I'm Marion Spates, the visual effects supervisor. Hi, I'm Jeff Aro. I'm the supervising stunt coordinator. And, and this, this is, is how, how we, we did, did it. it. I found out Netflix was going to be adapting Avatar The Last Airbender. I loved the animated series, ended up booking two episodes to direct episodes three and four, and then came back, directed the reshoots, and worked as a visual effects supervisor. Yes, you're looking at her. What was fun about Avatar The Last Airbender is that this is a homage to Kung Fu cinema. Water and earth are heavy, they have weight. Tai Chi is soft and fluid like water. Footgar, Hungar, Win Chan, these are southern style martial arts. We leaned on those because they're hard and powerful, which reflects earth, fire and air. They're light, they move quickly. So we went to the northern style of Kung Fu from China, which is Chan Chuan. Fire is explosive and sharp. So we used Baji Kwan, and going to contrast that with air, which is Bagua Zhang, it's circular and moves, it's unpredictable. You have to save the whole world. Let it fall, Hang, and learn what it means to be the Avatar. No! How do you see airbending? In the anime, you know, they give it color. So we leaned into the image of an F-22 engine, heat distortion that it produces. And then our last ingredient was whatever environment Aang is in, let's just pull the material from there. So if he's fighting Boomy, he's pulling up sand. If he's on a deck of a ship, he's pulling water from the ship. For me, water bending was the hardest. In episode 103, there's a real Katara character arc that is based on bending with the water whip. I find that water is something we all understand as humans, and when water doesn't obey the rules and laws of physics, it starts to break visually. So I found it the most challenging to take something that you know was water bending based, fully realized version of that effect. With the creatures in general, Appa and Momo were our two most challenging, and probably Appa is the most challenging because he just has scenes with Aang where you know he has to emote just like you know any other character on screen. And then also with Appa, we did a lot of research on his flying. We leaned into like a baby hippo, the manatee for the tail. So that was what helped us, gave us the essence of the movement, and also with the weight also because both of them are very large animals. You know, even being underwater. It was awesome, I think, for the cast to be able to be on a large faux Appa and be able to ride him to to feel that movement. With the Avatar state, it really starts on the stage with, with stunts. We had multiple rigs to help Gordon with his performance. We wanted to make sure that he wasn't just standing on a blue box. There's a tool called a parallelogram where she can be elevated on. We worked with one of our in-house uh, artists, we're actually vendors, to help figure out the detail that we wanted to have into the arrows. And then also with the eyes, we gave him a little bit of detail between the sclera, the eyes, and the pupil. Kiyoshi we wound up giving even more detail, so they would even have a slightly different appearance when they're in Avatar state. There's a lot of rounds and figuring out exactly how much detail but making sure we still convey what happens in the animated series with his arrow and ice being lit up. Really happy that I got to participate in a thing like this and Kung Fu cinema is something I grew up on. So to be able to have something that my four and two year old can start watching and that we'll grow up with, I'm really excited to be able to give them something that I think is gonna be timeless. The first question I asked myself as a fan is like, why are we making this into live action? And it was really to bring this to an audience that had never seen it before. And for those of us that had seen it, to get to see it again through new eyes. And, and that's really what we sought out to do is to widen the scope of people who were you know, fans of Avatar The Last Airbender.